Hello and welcome to your Monday morning with Master O. I have a great episode here for you. Hopefully you guys are ready to rock and roll. We're going to have a little bit of a laugh and we're also going to take a little bit of a personal look into what we need to do to help ourselves become better. Uh, for our first question, here's a little bit of a laugh, is tattoos, question mark. If you don't have any, what would you get and where? So I currently do not have any tattoos. I do not have any piercings. Um, if I was to get a tattoo, uh, this is something I've been thinking about actually for a pretty long time is I would get a nice font of my last name and I'd have an apostrophe. I have an apostrophe in my last name. So I'd have a shamrock as the apostrophe and I'd have that on my chest because that is my name and I'm proud of it. Um, my other option would be, uh, something with Taekwondo in Korean or even our Eagle or logo itself somewhere on my, um, Body. I'm not sure, maybe arm, chest, back, leg, I don't know, um, but those would be three other, uh, three of the tattoo ideas if I was ever good to get a tattoo. Uh, it would be my last name, with the shamrock as the apostrophe, it would be a Taekwondo in Korean somewhere, and our logo, uh, my Taekwondo logo, because that's just something that, it is our school, it is something that I have created, it's something that I'm proud of, and I want to show that pride with it. All right, here is a... <laughs> Love this question. Uh, this question is coming from a student. My mother wants to know how accurate Karate Kid is and who do you think the bad guy is? Johnny Lor Lawrence or Daniel LaRusso? She likes Cobra Kai a little too much. So, um, Karate Kid, from what I remember watching Karate Kid, I actually watched it recently. Um, when I first watched Karate Kid, I was like, ah, yeah, the kid the, the, the kid who's coming from out of town, he's learning karate from the old dude, and he's doing the wax on, wax on, that was awesome. And then he beat the uh, beat John, he beat uh, John, uh, Johnny Lawrence, and then it was just, ah, I did it. And obviously that's how the movie is supposed to be, that's how the movie is portrayed. Um, for me, um, it can be viewed di two different ways. It can be viewed as Johnny Lawrence actually being the good guy, or it can be viewed as Danny LaRusso being the good guy. Um... It, it, it depends on your perspective and your view and how you were raised and how you um, see uh, Daniel LaRusso as well as Johnny Lawrence. Um, Johnny Lawrence, he was perceived as the bad boy, uh, the bad guy, and Daniel LaRusso was the hero from out of town who helped Allie with an I, I think it was, Allie with a Y, I can't remember. And they had their connection and so forth, and they were uh, throughout their whole Karate Kid um, of that wonderful love triangle between the two gentlemen and Allie. Um, but in Cobra uh, 4, what I'm thinking, I mean, Johnny Lawrence, he was doing, I feel, what was, uh, in some cases, was the right thing to do. In some cases, it was not the right thing to do. Um, an example would be, I mean, you're trying to have a conversation with a former girlfriend, girlfriend, and she's broken up with you. You're trying to have a conversation. Yes, she does not want to have a conversation, but you're trying to push the issue of, hey, why are these things happening? Why, what, what can we do to work this out? And then Daniel LaRusso wanted to interject himself in not so much in a non-aggressive way. Then it turned into a fight. Um, and then, unfortunately, it snowballed into what became the Karate Kid 1, 2, and 3. Um, and obviously now Cobra Kai. Um, Cobra Kai, as I see it now, is... Especially the first couple seasons, it's, it's, they, they just finished season one, two, and three. And when season three came out, I watched it all in like one day. It was amazing. It was glorious. Oh man, I wish I loved it. Um, but for Cobra Kai, there is, I feel, a good balance, and I love the way that season three ended. Sorry, spoilers, of how Johnny and Danny became senseis together, and they're training together with their students. Because this, there is a point where Daniel Larusso. He's you're too nice sometimes. You if you're gonna fight and you're gonna protect yourself, you have to know when to. It's, it, you, there, there's no off switch. There's no kind of on. It's not a faucet. It's on. It's off. That's it. There's no like oh, we're gonna kind of let the water go a little bit, but we're gonna stop it. And there's there's it's a, when you're gonna fight, it has to be a light switch. You have to make that decision and you have to commit to it. You can't be doing it halfway, halfway, and that. That is where I see where Daniel LaRusso kind of fell short because of his upbringing and where he was in his uh, uh, socioeconomic class. And then you have Johnny Lawrence, who is from the lower socioeconomic class, where he has a fight to protect himself. He had to do this and that. 
And I guess there were things that were a little excessive, but they're also, he was not trying to sugarcoat it for his students. He, his students came there for a reason and they knew why they were coming. And they knew why they were going to get better. And I feel like there were a lot of good life lessons taught by Johnny and Daniel LaRusso both. So again, spoilers, I'm very happy that in the end of season three that they were able to kind of hash things out and team up and become better. Hopefully season four, it's going to be glorious. I hope so. so. But um, that is just my perception is they both were good guys. They both were bad guys. There was never a, oh, he's only the good guy. He's only the bad guys. Not like Autobots, Decepticons. Sorry, I'm a massive nerd when it comes to Transformers. Um, but that is just my opinion about Cobra Kai as well as the Karate Kids uh, movies. Uh, personal, here we go. How do you balance school slash work as well as extracurricular activities? It's like once you think you have it all, have it, something goes wrong. That is the truth, and I've seen it happen a lot. It's been happening, it happens to me. It happened to me. Um, for me, I was never the person who was doing a lot of extracurricular activities. I did do marching band my freshman and sophomore year in high school. I then since no longer did that, and I was doing just Taekwondo uh, after school as a after school job, helping out with the after school program at my school that I was learning from and, and t- helping teach the after school students. Um, but it's I didn't really have a balance. It was school, and then it was work. That was it. Um, um, it's definitely a juggling act. It depends on how much you're willing to commit to certain things. Sometimes certain activities require more of a commitment. If you're in high school and you are a starting athlete for that team, you might require more commitment to that team because that's what the coach needs and requires for you in order to help the team and help the team succeed, especially if it is a a team sport, which most ones are. Uh, The very few individual ones would be like, say, wrestling or swimming. I mean, again, also some cases it is a team sport. Your scores are put together. As a team, you can do relays for swimming. So you need to have a good sense of team camaraderie. And if the team sees you not committing as much as they are, it can be very um, problematic for the team as well. They might see you as not as committed to it, so they may not be as friendly with you. And I can understand that. Um, For me, I was freshman, sophomore year marching band, like I said, Junior year, I didn't do anything. My senior year, I was put in a leadership position in my ROTC unit in which I had to try to find that balance between school activities with uh, extracurriculars as well as my uh, Taekwondo. Um, I tried the best to balance it out. Um, Sometimes there was conflicts, and my teacher was not very happy with what the schedule that I put out there because I would schedule things on a Friday afternoon after school was over, and he was not the happiest with that because he wanted to go home and see his family as all parents would want to do. They don't want to stay extra on certain days when they know when they already have plans to do so, to leave. And unfortunately, those were the days that I was able to not have to be helping the after school because Fridays were a pretty easy, fun day, so they didn't need me to help as much. So I was trying to balance my Taekwondo and work working as well as my leadership perspective of my ROTC unit. Um, I was the highest ranking person in the situation for doing it's what's called a cadet of the month or cadet of the year board where all the younger uh, students, the freshmen and sophomores who are first year students come in and they have different various questions they ask and so forth, but, and they get an award for it just for being the best and everything, how their uniforms look, all that stuff. But that was all run by me because I was the senior most person after the person who was bef- who was senior most had to step down because he was committed to swim team and other ec- extracurricular activities. So I had to fill that slot. Um, but that is it, it. It can be definitely a difficult thing. And obviously, once you figure out something that is going really well for you, the, the wheels are all turning, the gears are all spinning, everything's perfect, and then. You get a flat tire. You get something wrong with a car. You've got, a, you've got an issue. And that can be difficult, and I understand that. And it is tough. It is frustrating. And that's when you sometimes have to stop for a second, you either take a knee or take a step back, take a few deep breaths, count to 10, and let's uh, you have to figure out the situation, how you can best figure it out. Yes, some, some sporadic events pop up, and you have to make a decision. Okay, am I going to do this or this? And that depends, of course, to your commitment to that. I have several students who are high schoolers and now college students and they are doing a lot of extracurricular activities by their choice or by their parents choice and it can be difficult and i understand that and again that also comes down to your commitment to 
what you're going to want to get out of it and what you're going to put into it. Um, but for that is definitely something that uh, you have to make the decision. What is more important? Is this more important or is that more important? Is this more important or is that more important? That's something that you have to figure out. You have to look at yourself. And as a young adult, young teenager, older teenager, middle school, high school student, that's a difficult thing to do. That's really difficult to stop and be like, what do I like more? What do I want to do more? And that's a tough choice. And that's something that you might have to, you have to figure out because those are the decisions that you have to make for you. And that's part of a being an adult sometimes for you teenagers. All right. Here we go. What would you recommend as an additional martial art besides jujitsu? So um, some of you may know I, I trained in jujitsu. I, I did it for two and a half years. Um, I trained with uh, Lucas Lepre, uh Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. It was in Matthews, North Carolina. I trained there because of the, number one, the convenience of it. I lived in Matthews. The school was in Matthews. And they had classes at 7 a.m. in the morning. So those are classes that I could go to otherwise, just like any other martial arts school. They train when we train. I can't make it because I'm teaching classes and running a Taekwondo school. And that's why I would do it. Um, I train in Jiu-Jitsu. I've constantly praised the positivity of training Jiu-Jitsu for everybody. Um, I started training Jiu-Jitsu because I had a encounter with a student, or not a student, a, another master, uh, Master Kane. He, was, he did wrestling for the wrestling team at Butler High School for a couple years, so he had a little bit of a ground game and understanding how to do have how to fight and how to tackle and take down and so forth and we were messing around one day and then he just shoots from my legs and grabs my legs takes me down and i'm floundering around like a fish i'm like this is not a fun feeling i need to figure this out so i a few weeks later i signed up for jujitsu classes and i started training jujitsu so i could then be able to have that ground game um other martial arts i would recommend is some form of grappling, whether it be jiu-jitsu or wrestling, um, because of having that ground game, in my personal opinion, is very, is very important. We have a standing game with Taekwondo. with our striking, our kicking, our blocking, and so forth. You want to have something that's close-knit, so something maybe that has wrist manipulations like Aikido or Hapkido, um, which we also do a little bit of training like that once you get to the black belt level. It's something for you to work towards. And then, obviously, again, like I said, jiu-jitsu and wrestling, you have a ground game. You want to have something you have standing up. You want something you can be close with someone, which also is jiu-jitsu or judo. And then you have the ground game and the taking down, which is wrestling, jiu-jitsu, and judo. Uh, those are my choices and my opinions of other martial arts that students should train other than just taekwondo. Once they get to a point in taekwondo where they feel like, okay, I'm good here. I still want to train, but I also want to do a little bit something else. Now, understand, though, as students... And something that I had to learn the hard way, too. I was a master. I was a fourth-degree black belt in Taekwondo, and I went to a jiu-jitsu academy, and I was a white belt. And I was getting crushed by students. Uh, there was a student who also did jiu-jitsu at the same school. He was a first-degree or second-degree at the time, and I knew him, and he was crushing me. That's something you have to learn is other than when you're at Taekwondo, you have this belt level, but, you, you're, again, your belt is a symbol of what you know and your experience. So I was a white belt. I was a master in one one martial art. I had a fourth degree black belt in this martial art. But over here, I'm a white belt because that's how much I knew about that martial art. I didn't know anything. I was literally floundering around on the, on the ground. Someone's on top of me in a mount position. They're sitting on me. They're going for arms, trying to go for joint locks or shoulder locks or arm locks, whatever. And I'm ah, trying to get my... I have no idea what I was doing. And I felt that was extremely important. And that is an extremely important phase to go through is not knowing anything. But you also need to go through is understanding when you're doing stuff, it's going to take practice, lots and lots of practice. And that's important. And I hope that you have to understand when students do go somewhere else to train, they understand I'm at one level here, I'm one level there. All right, we're good. I figured it out. I'm Taekwondo is over here, secondary martial art, tertiary martial art, whatever it might be. You, you're, you may be really good at one thing, but you got to be a learner at this one. So keep that in mind if you're ever going to do another martial art that you're not. Yes, you may have that resilience of training in Taekwondo. So you understand, hey, I got to keep going. I'm not going to quit, which is also what I was very grateful to have being a master in Taekwondo. Okay, I just got beat up. Cool. Let's reset. Let's do it again. I'm going to learn from this. I'm going to try to get better. I'm not going to get discouraged and get upset because I got beat because I that then is a problem with ego. You have ego. You have your, okay, I'm a black belt over here, but I'm a white belt over here. But now I'm getting beat up. This is something's not right. That's ego. 
you need to have ego. You need to have humility. You need to figure it out. Okay, how can I make myself better? And that's the way you can do that. And right. Now, here we go. We got two more questions here. For This is a two-question, uh, uh, there's a two-part question. So question one of one is, I was wondering maybe if you could answer uh, this for your Q&A. When you said first sergeant and your father played a part in you opening your own dojang, is it possible if you for you to go into it that deeper if it isn't too incredibly personal of course um no it's not actually not personal at all um i was at a taekwondo school i was a senior in high school i was teaching there and a part of my senior exit project uh, that we did our senior year i shadowed my master i actually entered this in one of our first videos um i realized that i could totally make this a career I can make this. A, I I love Taekwondo. I love teaching. I love helping people. And I was super happy to do this. Um, so when I, I mentioned it to my dad, he's like, go for it. You don't have to go. You don't have to. He never discouraged me from going to college. He never dis discouraged me from doing it. Because he also probably realized that I had, he could see at that time I was an 18 year old. I had some passion for something. It was not like I'm just going to be like, oh, well, I'm going to work at McDonald's all day, every day. Unless you plan on opening your own McDonald's, then I don't think that's the right idea personally for me. And that's probably my, as well as my father's philosophy. Um, but once I realized that, my teacher, first Sergeant Barksdale, I was considering going to the Marine Corps. He was, he, I told him, I was like, I think I want to do this thing. He's, don't worry about the Marine Corps. The Marine Corps is not going anywhere. And it still has not gone anywhere. And the wheels will keep turning, whether you're in it or you're out of it. And that's when I started to realize, like, hey, I should, I probably should do this. It's, they're very similar, Taekwondo, Marine Corps. They both have discipline. They both have a, a rank structure. You have learning. You're progressing. Um, once I got to the point though, after high school, I was in at Central Piedmont Community College. I was taking my community college classes and so forth. I was talking to my dad. He was not happy where he was with his job. And we sat down and had a conversation about opening our own school at some point. Um, I was basically running a Taekwondo school, but not having the title of it being mine. I was doing all the, uh, all the work for the owner. I was teaching classes. I was doing everything but running the books. I was doing everything but making decisions at the top level as the owner, which I shouldn't be doing because I'm not the owner. It's not my business. It's not my company. And I understand that. Um, and it was at that time I was a fourth Dan. I was going for I was going to be going for fifth Dan soon. That's when my dad and I started realizing this is something we need to do. So we tried to go through a process of purchasing the school that I was teaching at. And then we would change the name so forth and everything else and keep the students. That process did not uh, fulfill itself. So we then st I shook hands. I said I put my two weeks notice in before December. And I left at the end of the year uh, in 2016. And then we started Master O's Taekwondo in 2017 uh, just outside of Indian Land in Ballantyne. The very literally the border for everyone who's been at the original Master O's school. That was literally at the border um, of our North Carolina, South Carolina state lines. Um, but that is just the reason why I opened the school. I had a passion for teaching. I wanted to do, I wanted to teach, and it was something that I really strive to do. Um, but, yeah, that's that's why my dad and I got to visit together, and we made it work. All right. So question number two for this two-part portion is I also have some side questions as well. When it comes to working out, what websites, podcasts, tips do you have slash use? I am looking into getting back into shape. I am barely, I can barely do a push up now, and I'm working out true, uh, and and working out truly benefits my he mental health a ton. I never realized how much I wanted to be until, how how active I wanted to be until I came to your location. I truly did miss martial arts, and even though I do, even though I have been here for a few months, I do feel at home, like I do at RTC. I never felt that at my old, at my former school or anywhere else. When I'm at drill, I will randomly be pricing kicks or punches, not on people, of course, without realizing it. Martial arts is a very big uh, piece of the puzzle that makes me a teenage mess. This, that is known. Uh, <laughs> very true. So physical fitness, number one, physical fitness is an extremely important thing. Um, I feel like it's extremely important for me. I know for me mentally, if I don't exercise on a daily basis, if I don't sweat or work out, whether I be going for a walk, going for a jog, lifting, doing some kicking, pumse, sparring drills, kicking drills, whatever it might be, 
I don't feel right. I don't feel one fulfilled, like I accomplished anything, and two, I don't feel like I um. I I feel like there's a burden on me. Like I gotta get this energy. I'm a very energetic person, as uh, as a lot of you know. Um, but for uh, Taekwondo, it's definitely it's a great thing. Exercising extremely important. Um, what podcast websites or tips do I have or use? So there is so much out there on the internet. It is the minefield of information. Some minds are good. Some minds are bad. Um, same thing for websites, podcasts, and tips. I would say the number one reason is what, what are you working out for? Are you working out for physical fitness? Are you working out for functionality? Are you working out for looking good? Because all those are different ways to work out and exercise and help yourself. Um, and that is on you. Um, but yeah, for for me, I listen to and follow a person by the name of Pat McNamara. He is a former uh, Special Forces in the military, in the Army. He has a school actually in North Carolina somewhere. I believe that's out of Fayetteville. And he runs a program called, uh, shoot, what was it? Combat Strength Training. And he focuses on functionality, mobility, and being able to do things um, when it comes to being physically fit. Can you pick said object up? Can you move said object somewhere else? And it's very discouraging for me when I see people can't even squat down to pick up a pen they dropped or something. They can't just do a simple body movement. That's very discouraging. Now, that, that means that can be a lot of different things. It can be flexibility. It could be you have an injury. It could be all kinds of things. Now, again, physical fitness, it depends on what you're trying to get out of it and what you're trying to do with it. Um, if you're trying to be physically fit in a Taekwondo martial arts sense, you're going to be doing different training than someone who's trying to do a bodybuilding and look like all hunky and look like you're going to be a, a model or something. Those are two different ways to work out and two different, re- two different reasons to exercise. You have to first find out why you want to, what do you want to do with exercise? Are you doing it to get in shape? Are you working for cardiovascular, for muscle strength, for, uh, flexibility, and so forth? That's what you need to write down and figure out. Next, you need to, again, you have this huge goal you got to take you got a domino effect it. Have a domino, have a small domino, and let it build, 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 build. And as you start knocking those smaller ones down, the bigger ones are going to be going to get knocked down eventually. But you can't go to the big domino and like, I'm just going to knock this thing over. It's not going to work. you got to start the smallest one first. So when it comes to physical fitness, you got to take that as well as one step at a time, a little bit of time. Some people, they are not physically fit, and I understand that. So you start for a walk. Go up a flight of stairs or two flights. Whatever it might be, take the little steps to help yourself grow and progress and be better. This is something you have to think about when you're doing those kinds of things. That, but that's just my sense of you have to grow, 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 and progress. Some people, they there were times I was, that's why I got into martial arts. I was a skinny, scrawny kid. I was not the physically fit guy. Um, I was nothing like what I am now. I remember my freshman year, I had a broken humerus, and I had to do the physical fitness test for ROTC like two weeks after I got my, um, I was allowed to actually physically exercise. Um, I did like 10, 12 push-ups, and it was discouraging, but I also didn't exercise my arms for months couple months I want to say I was in a sling at least it, six to six weeks to two two months so it's uh, a month and a, a month and a half to two months I didn't do any upper body exercises no push-ups none of that I could run I was a great runner I had some I got some long legs and I could do it um, but for push-ups I couldn't do anything I and that's something to you to think about okay how can I progress and grow myself and make myself better um Again, that comes down to discipline, and discipline can be internally imposed or can be externally imposed. You have to keep that accountability in yourself, having a calendar, having a checklist, something like that, and start checking things off the boxes, or you can just be chilling and doing your thing and not worry about anything. It's your choice. That's all up to you. But this is just something you got to think about. What Number one, what are you trying to do for fitness? Are you trying to do it for looks? Are you trying to do it for health? What are you trying to do? Number two, how are you going to get there? You got to have a map. Now, again, the internet is full of all kinds of things. Um, again, I, I use, typically, I follow a guy. He does combat strength training is what it's called. Um, uh, it's functional movements. It's different stuff. It's not, I'm just going to go and do bench press and do squats, and that's it. Sometimes you got to do different stuff to work different muscles and to get the benefits out of it. Um, and that depends on 
your coaches. I mean, why why do people go to gyms and hire personal trainers? Because and maybe that personal trainer is different than this personal trainer. They all have different methods and theories and ways to do things and teach things. Uh, same way you have different football coaches. I mean, there not every football team in the NFL, high school or college has the exact same coach. They all have different philosophies, different methods. Some work, some don't. It is what it is. Um, but again, it also comes down to you to find out what you use a lot. Um, I've gotten all kinds of different tips and tricks. When I was trying to get physically fit for my physical fitness test in ROTC, I would get on YouTube and find, or not on YouTube, on uh, Google and find Navy SEAL workout program. And it would tell me, okay, this day you do run for this many miles. This day you run for this many miles. This day you do this many push-ups. After you run for this many miles, you do this many push-ups, this many sit-ups, and you slowly build it up. Again, it's the same philosophy that we have here at the Taekwondo School. It's a crawl to walk to run. That's the same way you should always think of it for everything, whether it be learning how to write your alphabet letters, learning how to talk. You don't just come out of the, you don't just come born in, like, as a baby and all of a sudden you're having conversations. You learn these things. You learn words and letters and phrases and sounds at a time. It's important. Um, and that's just the way things need to be with that. But again, that's just something that you got to do. Um, to finish off this one, I'm really proud to hear that you're randomly practicing kicks and punches during outside activities at school. Thankfully, you're not doing it on a person. I don't want you to get in trouble. But keep it up. Keep working hard. I love the way your mindset is at. I love you where you're where you're trying to get to. Keep working hard, and I will hope to see you in school in class soon. And that will conclude our video today. For that, again, keep in mind. When you're doing anything for goals, you always want to start off in a domino effect. Start off the smallest one, then work your way up. Don't just think of that big domino, that big goal, and only able to see that. you got to get some smaller pieces. But once you get to that big one, once you get to that big domino, see if there's a bigger one behind it. You never know. To start knocking it over. Just keep growing. Keep progressing. And I will see you, ladies and gentlemen, next time. Hope, cannot wait for season four of the Cobra Kai series to come out. And I will... Hope everyone has a wonderful day. Master O is out.